Well, now it's time for David Friend. I don't know if he's talking about the Packers and capitalism, but he is about to launch a daily rant. Thank you, Dylan. You know, after all the ranting I have done on this show about our bloated defense budgets, it may soon be my duty to eat a little crow and offer a salute to Secretary Leon Panetta and the military brass for what they did last week, assuming, of course, that they come through. The Obama administration's first real attempt to state a vision for the armed forces in a post-Iraq, post-Afghanistan, post-anything-goes budget world seems to be a good start. Troop strength in Europe probably has to come down. The era of keeping a big ground force for a big ground war probably is over. The Pentagon needs to be more cost effective with our money. You got that right. But the real rubber hits the road next month when the Pentagon releases its proposed budget and Congress decides how many of our tax dollars actually get spent. Will the military brass actually come through with the real cuts as promised? Hey, look, even if the Pentagon's proposed budget makes it through Weight Watchers on its way to Capitol Hill, it still has to make it through the porkers on Capitol Hill. And here's where it gets really interesting. You want to talk about money in politics? Wait till you see what defense contractors trying to preserve their gravy train do. I'm not talking about political campaign contributions to get special favors, although there is plenty of that. I'm talking about huge corporations with thousands of employees threatening to pull jobs out of congressional districts if cuts are made. Hell hath no fury like a defense contractor denied. But Forcing defense contractors to get leaner and meaner themselves is exactly what we need. According to Taxpayers for Common Sense, just a 15% reduction in the Pentagon's bloated service contracts would save a whopping $300 billion. President Eisenhower warned us in his final address to the nation of a military industrial complex that would serve its own needs even before the country's. He said the temptation would be to give resources to this industrial base, even if not requested, out of a mistaken belief that we must do so in order to protect the nation and at the expense of schools, roads, bridges, and other vital infrastructure. So take a look at this map. These are jobs at defense contractors like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and others. Note the states with the big numbers and which members of Congress live there, like, say, California, where House Armed Services Committee Chairman Buck McKeon is from. Think he's going to get the squeeze? Oh, yeah. He's already crying about how many Pentagon cuts are going to kill national security. Look, if it's about jobs, there are better ways to get them. The New York Times recently reported that spending on transportation or education gets way more jobs bang for the buck than defense. But that's not the point. There's a lobbying war on to be fought, men, and big companies with big contracts want to keep what they've got. Let the games begin. Enjoy Dylan. it while they've got it. That's a greedy bastard's delight right there. <laughs> you just described the greedy bastard's fantasy, uh, but I don't think it'll last too much longer. I, I think hope we're, you're I right. think that, 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 that as it gets so brazen and, and bald, it'll, it, it can't but last, or it can't but uh, end. If you want to learn more, go to greedybastards.com and stick around for some hardball.